To the postponement of the kingdom. Well, I cannot find mine if I have one. Okay. All right. I'm going to tell y'all something about that in just a minute. Faith is a flexible thing. And if you learn that as a Christian, it's a flexible thing. It runs our faith now. Our faith. Your faith. Your faith. Okay. I'm not talking about Christ. I'm talking about us. Our faith goes like this. Sometimes it can be little. Sometimes it can be a lot. Sometimes it's in the middle. Sometimes it's up again. Sometimes it's down again and back up and around and back down this way and up and up like this. Now what determines our faith is what the Bible says in Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now what I'm going to do tonight is uh, these things that I'm teaching right now are running in a succession. They're running in a succession. I do what I can to revamp what it is that I'm doing. But Sunday's extremely important. Endeavor all you can to get there. I'm going to be preaching some things that this church has never heard. Churches grow, so do pastors. How about those habits? I don't know where to finish, but I'm learning. And I keep learning. But I know what I've preached. I know what has been preached here, whether myself or some other person. Uh, but Sunday, you're going to hear some things you've never heard. But I promise you, I promise you, those of you that have been here and those of you that are new to the understanding about right division, when we leave Sunday afternoon, your faith is going to be stronger in teaching what it is that we teach which is rightly dividing the word of truth. Understand, you will have a, a heightened understanding of the mystery of Christ from Paul's books and how they came about. I'll just leave it right there. I don't want to do too much. I'm not all flat on the face. I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm just trying to help kind of set it up. And I want to say before we go any further, I really enjoyed the basketball games last night in Smithfield. I really enjoyed that, seeing everybody and everything. And I learned something last night about one young lady that comes to this church. She won state oh, in Oklahoma. She won state in choir. And that's none other than Alyssa. She won state. I'm going to announce that again Sunday if it doesn't embarrass you. And I told her, I said, can I buy you a coat or something? I mean... It was so good to do such a thing as that. That's such a great achievement. Um, there's a lot of kids from around the state that compete for that. And she was in, if I got it right, Alyssa, the top 25. What do y'all think of that? Yes, if you're happy about that, you can stop. Smile. Okay, I'm starting now. All right, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to center this lesson around the word church. Now, some of your news, what I'm going to teach tonight. So I just ask you this. I'll stop and do a commercial in a little bit. You know, Americans are used to commercials. It's kind of why I preach the way I preach. Let me see if I've got this stuff. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Commercial coming up. All right. But I want to center around the word church. Now, I'm not one to take Greek language or a definition and superimpose it over to English. But there's something you do need to know about the word church. And in the New Testament, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. 
Now the word ecclesia means a called out assembly with a message. Now one of the churches that is referenced in the New Testament is actually the Old Testament ecclesia, the Old Testament church. I'll use the word and I'll show you what the differences are between those words in the different contexts in the Bible. Now, let me get to it. Look in Ephesians 1.10. Ephesians 1.10. So, the word church, it's ecclesia, it means a congregation brought together by God to teach a message and to have an expectation. An expectation of what God is doing. He never asked people to serve him without giving them an expectation of what it is that he wants from them and what they're going to gain. Okay? That's very important for you. That'll help you be able to rightly divide a lot of passages that are difficult. All right, Ephesians 1.10. Now, this is where the thing is headed. Uh, the whole thing. The whole biblical history. All of it. All of it is headed in one direction. Ephesians 1 and verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that means everything's over with. The kingdom is over with. The, the, the time that the church, uh, that will be over with. We go out in the rapture. Uh, then the kingdom comes in. It lasts for a thousand years. After all is said and done, after all is said and done, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. So there will be a day when all of the people, whether they were in Israel, the church in the wilderness, and I'll show you in a minute, in Israel, or whether they were part of a remnant that believed Jesus during his earthly ministry, a little flock that did believe him, or whether or not they're going to be in the church, which is the body of Christ. They're going to all be together under Christ when all, the entire Bible, is fulfilled. Now, breaking down those three churches, and I'm going to use the word church, but remember, behind that word is the understanding of congregation with a message and an expectation. Key on that word. Expectation. What did the Old Old Testament people expect? What did the church at the temple expect? The little remnant that came out from Israel? What does the body of Christ expect? Okay? Now, those three things will help you divide the doctrine that is for each of those three groups if you know what their expectation is. All right. If we step back into history where the times have not been fulfilled, then we find that God has delivered different instructions to humanity at different times. And it's not all the same. Travis, no one, don't you find my picture? No one in the Old Testament was asked to respond to the death of Christ on the cross or the fact that he rose again. So, but God has something for them, and he also gave them an expectation. We'll see it. So, God has delivered different instructions, what people were to teach, what people were to teach to humanity, his people, God's people, to humanity at different times in the Bible. Is that too hard? Okay, I didn't think so. Uh, those instructions change the message of the congregation or the church that God is using at that point in time. It's not like, and don't mistake when I use the word church, I'm talking about a congregation with a given message with a certain expectation coming to them. Okay, so when God gives, gives his instructions to those churches that in the Bible, you can expect them to have a mission, what it is they're expected to do, and then an expectation of what they will have after they do what God said do. See? All right, and it changes. It's not the same. Let me give you an example. A short one. You remember when Jesus was standing by the seashore, he had already resurrected, 
and he began to ascend into heaven. And the disciples are sitting there watching. All right. The uh, angel told the disciples, says, why are you gazing up? He said, that same Jesus that you just saw ascend will so descend back down on the earth as you have seen him go. All right? That's the expectation that those people worship. Right. Now, you, you turn the coin over and you get to us. We're to look forward to going up in a rapture in the church where Jesus, where we rise to meet Jesus in the clouds. That's in 2 Thessalonians 4. So that, 1 Thessalonians 4. All right, so that's just one example of two different expectations. All right? So those instructions can change the message of the congregation, the given congregation, and some even change the nature of that congregation. In the Old Testament, no one was born of the Spirit, not a soul. When they did what God said do, were they indeed saved people? Yes. But none of them were born of the Spirit or regenerated of the Spirit. But the church, the body of Christ, certainly is. Different. Different. All right. Now, let's see here. The expectations of each of these churches is based on whatever teaching they had received at that given time. If you were taught the law and you were a member of, of uh, national Israel in the Old Testament, you had a certain expectation. All right, now I'm going to work with that a little bit. The church in the wilderness. Now remember I said that the references for these three churches I'm going to talk about tonight and show you the differences in them, are all written in the New Testament. Even though this church or this congregation existed in the Old Testament, it's written about in Acts chapter 7, if you would turn there with me, and verse 38. And this is Stephen preaching, and he's talking about uh, this church. This Old Testament group. Now remember, we're going to try and find their expectation. Acts chapter 7 and verse 38. You've got, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. This is Stephen. Uh, he wasn't one of the twelve, but the twelve had chosen him because he was a man that was full of the God, full of the Holy Ghost early on there as they are preaching the imminent return of Jesus Christ down to the earth like the angels had told them along the seashore. I'll show you that in a minute. He says, this is he, speaking of Jesus, that was in the church in the wilderness, speaking of God, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Um, no, wait, I'm talking about Moses. So pardon me. Verse 37, this is that Moses. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. So Moses was a part of that. He was the leader of it, actually. Uh, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. So the angel told Moses what he wanted him to tell the children of Israel. So see, he's got a message. And he's going to form a congregation around that message. That, that congregation in the New Testament is called a church. But it's not the church, the body of Christ. That's why Paul always delineates the church, which is the body of Christ. Always. All right. The angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai with our fathers who received the lively oracles given unto us. He's talking about the commandments that were given to them. That's what they were to live by. That was the message that Moses had from God. And it gave them a certain expectation. Now, Stephen's expectation would have been the same as the church which was at the temple. Um, he was looking for Jesus to return. Wait a minute, man, get ahead of yourself. Let me just say this and then I'll move to that next church. So this, Acts 7, 38, refers to the nation of Israel because he's given the history of Israel. That's what he should have said. He's given the history of Israel to the leaders of Israel, and telling them they need to trust in Jesus as Messiah. Okay? 
These people operated <coughs> under God's instructions in the Old Testament under the Mosaic law. This message and mission continued up to and through Jesus' earthly ministry. In other words, when the prophets spake, Brother Danny, when the prophets spoke to Israel, they spoke of the coming physical kingdom that was coming on this earth with a Messiah who was of the lineage of David who would sit on a literal throne in Jerusalem. Okay. <coughs> so that was part of their expectation. The expectation is on this earth, earthly kingdom with Messiah on David's throne. The son of David, he's called in the Old Testament. Peter calls him that too, in Acts 2. Then there's the church in the temple. It is referred to, look over at Acts chapter 2. Now this is why we studied what we studied the other evening. In between my... <laughs> Break. Oh, it's time for a commercial. <laughs> so, y'all see this? This is almost as good as Blue Emu. <laughs> but this is a different product that gives you that gives you energy, but it doesn't make you nervous like Red Bull and all that stuff. <laughs> so, it's called V8 Energy. They've got three or four different flavors. You can get this at Walmart. It gives you a little lift throughout your day if you've already got Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're even young. So don't forget that. The eight energy. Now, <laughs> turn with me to Acts chapter 2 and verse 44. Now we've got our American commercial in there, so we're doing good. Now we can go back. Acts chapter 2, 44. Now this is what, this is the church in the temple. A little bit different and a little bit different and more immediate expectation on Jesus. Okay? Acts 2, 44 through 47. But, but we're still not to the church, the body of Christ. Okay? That's hard. So let's look and see what we've got here and see if we can figure out their expectation. A key to understand the differences in these different groups in the Bible is to find out what they were looking for. After God gave them instructions, what were they looking for as their reward from God? Okay. So, and all that believed were together and had all things common. You're going to readily, now you're going to readily understand this is not us. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Remember Sunday night. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. That's a big cue right there. There's no denominations here. This is temple worship of national Israel and any Gentile who had become a Jew by religion. Not, not Jews and Gentiles on an even plane, not yet. Okay. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to that church, the church at the temple, daily such as should be saved. And they were indeed saved. They would believe that Jesus, they believed the message in Acts 3. Acts 3. Let's see where I'm going to be on that. Verse 19. Peter's still talking to the same group. Jews, Jews, Jews. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. This is their expectation. We're reading. This isn't the church's body of Christ's expectation. Brother Charlie, our sins have already been blotted out. We're not looking for them to be blotted out. We've trusted in the blood of Christ. First Corinthians 6 says that we've been washed, cleansed, etc., etc. The spiritual operation. We accept that by faith. That is our new position in Christ. These people are still looking for a blotting out of their sins. And indeed, they're going to get their reward and their expectation will be fulfilled. I'll tell you when in just a minute. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Here it is. When, Peter, 
Are they Christians? I mean, can they expect an immediate blood atonement? No. Their expectation when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Oh, you mean they're going to refer back to all the kingdom doctrine? And he shall send Jesus Christ, Peter says, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God had spoken by the mouth of all his prophets since the world began. Then what's going to happen? He will return down to the Mount of Olives. We find that in the Old Testament prophecies. He will return to the Mount of Olives, come down to be the Messiah of Israel in a kingdom that will last 1,000 years. That is the church at the temple's expectation. It's, it's, it's more heightened. It's more heightened, Brother Danny, than... than in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to a kingdom, yes. But the book of Joel prophesied that the Lord was going to pour out his spirit on Israel. They had seen that. He did pour out his spirit on Israel, on his destiny that day. I mean, just previous to when Peter's preaching. So they have a heightened expectation. It's the same expectation as the church in the wilderness, but it's heightened because something else has been happening. The Holy Spirit. Jesus has poured the Holy Spirit out on them. They spoke with languages that all the Jews could understand. And then Peter says, now you just look for it. All right? But then something happens. So that's even the church of the temple. Oh, the, the, the kingdom is available. The kingdom is fully available right there. And their expectation was that it was coming. Now when you read Acts 2, notice... That when Paul Peter is quoting, uh, let's look at it. Notice that when Peter is quoting Joel, watch this. Get down in Acts 2 and verse 16. Something else that did not happen that was supposed to happen before they entered the kingdom. We know it as the tribulation. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass. Now he's still working with the church in the wilderness and a, and a new one, the church at the temple with a heightened expectation of the return of Jesus because they'd seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. That's the last days of Israel prophesied hundreds of times in the Old Testament. Saith God, it's not the same as the last times of the church that Paul writes about later. Okay? Not the same. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And they said, good. Then he said, and all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Well, that's exactly what happened at Pentecost. But that's all that happened. Remember, their expectation is to believe on Jesus as the Messiah and move into the kingdom. Well, the, the leadership of Israel would not accept Jesus as the Messiah. That's a big problem. All right, but look at this part. This did not happen. And I will show wonders in heaven above. They're all listed in the Old Testament prophecies and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. This, this has to do with a period of time that is that we understand as the tribulation. It won't begin now until after we're gone because we have an expectation. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Now, is there anyone in this room that thinks that that has already happened? It has not already happened. But that is the expectation of the Old Testament church, the congregation, with a... With a statement of faith and omission 
That is the expectation of the church and the temple that it meet in there. Uh, uh, the remnant, the small remnant that believed that Jesus was the Messiah and the son of David, all of a sudden it stops because of a lack of faith in Israel's leadership. Paul deals with that. Thank God. In Romans 9, 10, and 11. You can go ahead and study that. My phone number is 394-2618 because it's hard passage of scripture to understand. I will help as much as I can. If I can't answer it, I call Brother Daniel. If he can't answer it, I call Brother Dave. If he can't answer it, I'll call somebody else. It's a tough passage of scripture. But it will explain to you what happened to Israel. Lack of faith in their own Messiah. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood. That still has yet to happen. That will happen. That will happen. But that part of their expectation did not come to pass because of a lack of faith on the leadership of Israel. So God is going to change his working with mankind again. Now I promise you Sunday, what I'm going to preach about, teach about Sunday, you'll understand that so clear it will be like a vision from heaven. You'll see what I mean by that Sunday. No, I didn't have a vision. I'm just saying it'll clear up. It'll clear up. After all, it's not fair to anyone that comes to this church for me to talk about all this right division and all these different things and not explain what it is that I'm talking about. It's not fair. Brother Ronnie, if I can't produce enough of the understanding of the Word of God to increase our faith in what it is that we're teaching, I need to go sell the used cars. That's exactly what I need to do. Probably make more money. No, I can't. <laughs> well, I make a good used car. Uh, that's our second. That's our second. Is that a commercial? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so... And it shall come to pass, he says in verse 21, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, in Acts 3, you're going to see further the church at the temple's expectation. Peter's giving it to them. Uh, look at verse 19. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins, and I've read this, but I'm going to give it again. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. They were expecting Jesus to return then, almost immediately from his ascension, within a seven-year period, and they had prophecy of that. He didn't, but he did do something else. He took that time of judgment with the moon to blood and all of that stuff, all the signs in the heavens, and he postponed it. Way over in the future. Way over here. Past the next church that he's going to establish. Way beyond this. The Jews, Peter learned about it from Paul, if he learned it, and I think he did. In 2 Peter, I think he did. But Paul writes in Romans chapter 11 about the fact that God did postpone it. This church's expectation, the church at the temple, the church in the wilderness, their expectation, heightened here because of the falling of the Spirit of God, pouring out by Jesus, all the way over here, past this little thing called the church, the body of Christ, that has its own expectation. See? So they had every right to preach it. It's just not happening. And during this period of time, I'm going to go from Acts 9, during this period of time from Acts 9 until Paul is steadily preaching the gospel of the grace of God, those people learned that that kingdom had been put forward in the time. They had to learn from Paul. Okay, now, us, us, I'm doing this fashion of Paul with what is it that the church 
According to Scripture, the church, the body of Christ, is to believe in order to please God and in order to be saved. What is the fullness of what it is that God asks us? Well, he asks us, first of all, simply, to believe that he died for our sins on the cross, went in the tomb, and rose again the third day. If you believe that, if you come to God and you say, God, you're right. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm one of those all. And I need you. My sins need to be washed. And he says, okay, he doesn't wait around. Doesn't be around the bush. He doesn't say you have to be baptized. Doesn't say you have to take communion. Doesn't, don't have to get the hope of the Eucharist. None of that stuff. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Notice how different that is. That's different from an expectation of Jesus returning to the earth to, to get into a kingdom, a physical kingdom on the earth. Have you with me? She's getting this. <laughs> All right. The church, the body of Christ. That's us. Um, the mission is to help people get into Christ's body. The church. It's a spiritual body. It is a spiritual thing. And we're baptized not by Jesus pouring out the Spirit on Israelites, but by the Holy Spirit placing us into the body of Christ. Different baptized. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. But it does heighten our expectation of what God is going to do for us. Just like it did for the Jew, it'll do that for us. But we need to know what we're to expect. Wouldn't that be good? Besides being saved and having some joy in your life and know the forgiveness of Christ, you look in the mirror and say, I have received the forgiveness of God. I am washed in the blood. Peter couldn't talk like that. The Old Testament prophets couldn't talk like that to the church in the wilderness. It's nowhere in the teaching they had. It was nowhere in the teaching of the 12 disciples. Peter never preaches about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Nor does he teach about being baptized by the Spirit into the body of Jesus Christ. That doesn't come to that call. All right. So, first, uh, so where was I going? 12, 13. Where? 12, 13. Oh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Okay, right quick. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. See that? We're baptized by the spirit himself into the body of Christ. Even the water baptism changes because of this. He's, Jesus is not pouring out. The Holy Spirit is placing you in. The picture in the water of the Bible. See? Water baptism changes through this. All right. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's what our water baptism is a picture of. We've already been, that's already happened to us if we trust in Christ. You're on your way to heaven when you trust the second you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So your salvation is not dependent on any church's baptism. We do baptize as one of the ordinances or places of order in a church. It just helps and it's a good testimony. It's a good testimony to a world that can't understand about this spiritual operation that God has performed in our lives. See? Hard to explain sometimes to people. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. You mean he's going to do something with a Gentile now that's totally equal with a Jew? That's different. Gentiles can now have an expectation coming from Whether we be bond or free, and then all made to drink into one spirit. So that's wonderful. I just want to show you the difference in the way the spirit works, and we get into the, the uh, body of Christ. Now look at 1 Corinthians 15 and show you our expectation. And it's the expectation I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and present to people who are not saved an expectation of how to be saved 
something at the beginning of the Christian life, and I've got one more expe explanation, one more expectation that I want to talk about before we leave. All right? But when we tell someone, are you, we don't tell them, wait for the return of Jesus down here. We're going to get this kingdom started, and all the prophets have talked about this. We tell people this has been a secret by God. It is a secret. That's why we call it, that's why Paul calls it a mystery. This has been kept secret. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1, we call the gospel of grace. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the good news, our set of good news. Our set of good news. While I pre which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. By which also ye are saved. That's an expectation. And I can share that expectation with you. You can have the expectation of being saved. You see, that I mean saved, saved, eternally. Not worried about going into a kingdom, the Old Testament expectation. Not worried about Israel actually going into the land with Jesus under the Davidic New Covenant. But an expectation of being saved unto something. I'll stay right with me. By which also you're saved if you keep in memory what I preached unto you and what I preached unto you. I mean, remember. <laughs> hmm. Unless you have believed in vain. It's possible to miss heaven by just two or three inches of scripture. Very possible. Be careful. Watch. Listen. It's like pulling up to a train. Watch. Look. How do you know? Watch. Look and listen. <laughs> Don't run across the front of the train. It will kill you. Okay? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. More on that Sunday. I can't do all this tonight. Keep you folks here. And I'm out of commercial. <laughs> For I, I've delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That's our message. Continuing. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That is the church, the body of Christ's message. It's not the law. It's not the church, it's the temple with an expectation of Christ coming back down and sitting down and starting the kingdom. That's the church, it's the temple. This one is being saved. Eternally. We've got to believe, and, the, and the, the mission is to get folks to believe that Jesus was very or he would die on the cross, I'm sorry, shed his blood, went in the tomb, rose again the third day. That's it. You want to get somebody saved, that's all you got to tell them. And ask them to believe. They'll know they're sinners. Who don't know they're sinners? You know how you know they're sinners? Because the Bible says, for all of sin comes short of the glory of God. <laughs> but people can change their mind. They say, well, I, I want to be washed by this blood. I want to receive it. I want this gospel. I want this truth. Now, if you accept it, your expectation comes over after hopefully a full life of living for Christ, a life that is filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory with an expectation ultimately of heaven, but how are we going to get there? We might get in on our expectation. The Jews are still waiting to get their kingdom. We're still waiting to go to heaven. But we can have this expectation. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's not the Old Testament Israelites. It's not their expectation. It's not the church, it's the temple. It's not their expectation. But it is ours. And it's a wonderful thing to think about. You know where I'm going, Brother Dave. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I tried, I tried. I don't want y'all to miss gun smoke. <laughs> I don't know what's on anymore. Oh, I got a conversion before we leave. Okay, verse 13. 
Now this is ours. This belongs to us. Every blood-washed child of the living and almighty God that has believed that Jesus died for our sins, went to the tomb and rose again the third day, we believe that we're washed in the blood of Christ, made ready for heaven immediately by the blood of Jesus Christ plus nothing. Just by him. That's why we worship him. That's why we serve him. This is ours. Verse 13. But I would not. Expectation. Remember that word. It will help you rightly divide these scriptures. Because the expectation, and I've proved it tonight, changes. Because the instructions change. Okay? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that is, dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died, and rose again. See, so he's even mentioned in the gospel, which is the beginning of our expectation of salvation. Died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's my expectation. If I live to the rapture, my entire, um, all of the brothers and sisters that I've met, my family that have been saved, uh, Brother Lester Wilson, I'm going to get to see him, I always think of him. He told me, he said, when you hear that if somebody says I died, don't you tell them that's a lie. He said, I'm going to be with Jesus. And he did go to be with Jesus. I see Brother Lester always. I see him in the and die. See, my expectation. You see why it's so important that we like to divide the word of truth, brothers and sisters. Our expectation from God. We have every right to it. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank God. Our loved ones that have gone on to be with Jesus. I've done funerals before. I've done funerals before when I would search and ask the family. When was the time? Where was it at? What did this lady have to say or this man have to say about Jesus Christ? It may have been 40 years ago. I don't care. They may not have had this necessarily understood this expectation either. They may not have got the chance to be to learn the Bible or to be in a church that teaches the Word of God. May not have got that chance. But they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that He died for their sins and He went in the tomb and He rose again the third day. And I say, Hallelujah! Amen. Every Born again, child of God has a spiritual life. Yeah. And anyone that cheapens that's a dirty dog. My book and in this book. <laughs> Amen. That's what I start talking about. A bloodhound. They say, they say, well, she, she did it. Oh. Well, he did that. Oh, 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 is that right? Then I just go to work. And I try to do something that wonderful family that loved their loved one because Christ gave me an expectation. This is the church's expectation. The body of Christ's expectation. God. Don't confuse it with Israel. Don't confuse it with those wonderful people in the temple. It's not the same. Paul says to teach us to people to bring them comfort to Christians. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I believe that. Amen. I have I know a lot of people that have. You say, well, that's too simple. They had to become a church of Christ. They had to get baptized by that one. No! One thing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I get some mad some of these fundamentalists. I am spitting. <laughs> I'm sorry. For this we say unto you, you Christians, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, that 
Mackenzie, what do you think about that? That we, that's the right, what do you think about that? Katie? <coughs> Alyssa? Natalie? What do you think about that? That we, which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them that are asleep. We're not going to go up any faster, at least our bodies. We're not going to get our new bodies until they get their new bodies. I've taught that before, but that's what it's talking about. For the Lord himself, and I believe this from the top of my little pointy head to the bottom of my stinky sock. <laughs> For the Lord, oh, no, no, I do wash them. In fact, I did a load of washing today. Getting pretty good at it. I won't say how many washers I had to do. <laughs> For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He say, hello, Ronnie. Are you ready for this, honey? <laughs> you coming up here. He comes in the air. He doesn't sit down in Mount of Olives. That's the temple church. That comes later, after we get up to heaven. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. It's no small thing. Boy, I love trumpet music. I do. And the dead Christ shall rise first. Right. That is their bodies, their souls already gone. Paul said to be absent body be present for us. This is our expectation of these old bodies. Got arthritis and I, reverse arthritis, anything that old bodies told us. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> then we which are alive and remain, this is our this should be your expectation. If you're learning it just for the first time tonight, that's okay. That's all right. If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and somebody had given you this expectation, they have done you the favor, but it's not your fault. It's not your fault. But you're hearing it tonight. You can expect this to happen because it's going to. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Notice the difference. Not coming down like the angel told the boys on the Galilee. Going up to meet him in the air. Now I'm a little afraid of heights. The Lord's going to stick to me somewhere or another. <sighs> One lady told me, said, well, it'll be fast. Good. <laughs> <laughs> in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Once you go to heaven, you're not coming back down here. Now, what I've tried to do tonight is to show you the differences in the instructions that God has given different sets of people in that life. And then their message, the mission of the people that taught them, then their expectation of what is going to happen. The expectation of the Jewish people is not finished yet. They haven't got that kingdom, but they will. We'll get to go up and be with Jesus. Then immediately, after those days, immediately, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that stuff's going to get all found up. Blood moons and all that. Real blood moons. Signs in the heavens. Tribulation, a time of sorrows. It lasts seven years. Then, thank God, and bless the Jewish hearts, they're going to go into the kingdom. Guess what else he's going to do? He's going to pour out his spirit on that generation. It's all in Ezekiel 36. Then the Old Testament people, old Abraham, I'm just seeing him staggering out there in the desert, didn't even have a Bible. No Bible. But he had a Bible. And he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to go home, pack up Sarah, and go to the land and do you. He said, okay, that's fine. Where is it? Or it's another table. <laughs> and he goes home, and there's Sarah. You women here. Great women of faith, as far as I'm concerned. 
all of that. I mean, this took place. And she said, well, where are we going today, man? He said, I don't know. And she said, well, I'll get your kids. <laughs> Help me get to the van in there. I'm not going without my couch. <laughs> and my pretty table, my dishes, no way. He said, I'm going to use all that stuff. But you talk about faith. Going to take her on a trip. She don't even know where she's going. You see, when Christ is the most important thing, these other things come as your conclusion. I hope that you continue to have a tremendous expectation for what Jesus is going to do for you. He's already saved you. He's going to pull you out of here. You're going to fly fast, fast, fast. You can believe it. Fast, fast, fast. You're going to have a home in heaven with the most loving, wonderful creator who cares so much for you that he sent his only begotten son to pay for you in your sins. What an expectation. That's all there. May I say something good for your purpose? Huh? huh? Can I say something for you to close it out? May, um, this month is kind of strange because there are five Mondays in this month. So next Monday will be the tea party. Okay. The last meeting of the month. And next Wednesday is snack night already. It's not the last Wednesday of the month. Like I've got that. I've got that up there. Okay. Okay. Snack night will be pushed one week and, to December 1st. And the Christmas parade is December the 3rd. Uh, we're not going to do the parade. We've got too many things going on. Families are going to be busy. Everybody didn't know. I didn't know until the day when it was. Amen. But thank you. I should have said this earlier. Uh, have we set up on a date yet? We don't have to tonight. On a date for when we're going to get together? The ladies do? So far, it's the 17th. When now? 17th. 17th. On a Friday. At, on a Friday at 530. 530? All right. 17th at 530 Sunday evening. Now, young ladies, Alyssa, y'all come too. Y'all come too. That'll be a good experience for you. I want you to hear some of the prayers of these ladies. I sure do. That is wonderful. Wonderful. They're a little bit shy sometimes around him. All right, so the teen girls, wonderfully welcome, and it will be, give you a chance to fellowship with your sister. All right. I've done it. I'm, I'm trying to close this thing down. All right. So, Jerry? Yes. I'm having a deer killing seminar at my house on Saturday. I've already signed up. If anybody's more welcome, then we'll come. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I'm just being funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Tomorrow night, the Smithfield Braves play the Baptist Bombers. What's their name? Panthers. Panthers. Yeah. Anyway, 6 30. All right. Anyone have any prayer for someone that's ill before we dismiss? Be sure to pray for each other's families. We all stay healthy. And that this is going to be one of the best holiday seasons we've ever had in our lives. You know? Let's look forward to it. Let's have a good time, Brother Dan. Amen. Let's do it. I, I, I like them. I like them. Thanksgiving. Remember what they're about. Thanksgiving to the Lord. That's where it goes. And, and the things that the Lord's done for us and celebrating the birth of the great saint there out this earth, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I don't have any problem with that at all. I go through, I sing all those, I sing all those Christmas songs in Walmart. Hey, you talk about, what do they call that, spacing? That's <laughs> using space. <laughs> have fun with it, folks. Have fun with it. 
Amen. Faith, my brother, would you dismiss us, please? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for all you've given us and what you do for us, Lord. Uh, thank you for keeping everybody safe as we travel here, Lord. I pray that you bless and brother Jerry for this message, Lord. I pray that you be with everybody as we travel home, Lord. I pray that you be with everybody as we finish off this week, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All oh, God's people say, Every day, and then you know, you have to be smart. Yeah, it's like, well, everything is that how you treat them? Hey, what is it? Yeah, I house work though. I like so everything's working. Oh, yeah, yeah, I always had my own. I didn't know how to do it. I had a son last night, your mother. Yeah, my own work job. No, there's always that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm going to be 